Mike Kramer, Matt Gittens, joining you for the last time, at least football-wise, this season. It was a good season, and I think let's start with the positives of what happened. There was a lot of people in this dome to see a lot of great highlights from this team. Well, a five-game improvement in the win column and a five-game improvement in the loss column, which afforded us an 8-4 and four season. A tremendous run by a record-setting offense who broke a 58-year-old team rushing record led by a quarterback who threw for 4,000 yards. A, a couple of ingredients that many people think is impossible, but will now be our standard of performance. I think fans are immediately going to go to this as the playoffs. Playoffs? I have to at least <laughs> go there once. You didn't get in. You were oh so close, but you took a different approach to that. Well, we're a, we're a block punt at Eastern Washington and a, a, a vacant wheel route coverage against Montana State away from being undefeated in the conference. Because of our non-conference schedule, the way it works for us, and what we try to achieve, we literally have to be perfect in the conference to be able to even anticipate being in the postseason. We weren't, we're not, we're home, we had a good season. We ended with a win over a, a rival that had beaten us 11 years in a row. We played in front of 7,000 our, in our last game at home when the students were gone for Thanksgiving vacation. So a lot of cool things went on, especially all the way to the last minute of the last game. You and I have talked so many times over the last four years, and, and I've said, the streak that ended here, the streak that ended here, <laughs> this and that. I officially, I do not have any more questions that way. How nice is that? Well, there's some more last time, the last time Idaho State did this or that. There are some other things we're going to be able to talk about in years to come as we improve on defense and catch up to the high caliber of our offense. But in the meantime, offensively, uh, what you've been able to watch here for four years under Don Bailey is unprecedented. It's unprecedented not only at Idaho State, but in the Big Sky Conference. No team has thrown for more than 3,300 yards four seasons in a row like we have and more on, more on schedule for next year. Let's talk about some of the accomplishments this year. Two years ago, it was laughable. You, I mean, if you could, I felt like I could get as many rushing yards as, as you guys were going to get out there, and that was almost zero. That's not the case anymore. And, man, why has that improved so much? Well, the first thing is that offensive line-wise has matured and grown up. Uh, under Matt Troxell's direction, they, they understand the nuances of what we're trying to do. There's a lot of veteran players in that group. And the most beautiful thing is only one of them is a senior. Jim Bagley leaves after 44 consecutive starts. And great young offensive linemen waiting in the wings to show that they can be every bit as good as this team was in 214. But also important to us was the rise of our defense. We surrendered 72 touchdowns two years ago. We're down in the 40s now, and that's good for us. We've still got to make about a 10 touchdown per game improvement as we head into 215. Let's talk throwing the ball, too, before we, we wish him off into the sunset. Justin Arias, man, what a way to finish off his career. A spectacular uh, understanding of what we asked him to do. Not necessarily a, a one-time thing for us because Kevin Yost before him was, was very excellent also. And Justin literally took advantage of what, he, what Kevin did not have, a better offensive front, one of the most productive running backs in ISU football history, an offensive scheme that was absolutely welded and and meant to be for his skill level, and he just took it and ran with it as maybe the best player in the United States. Moving forward, I, I watched those seniors out there. I saw the picture of the guys that were graduating. You're like, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. But now it's, it's not vacant behind him. There's a lot of guys coming up. Let's start at the quarterback position. Moving forward, it's uncertain for next year. I know you're not going to name a starter right now, but talk about the guys that will come in and compete for the job. I don't really care. <laughs> I really I really don't care. That, that's a drama that we'll have at another day. What's important is that nine quality starters return. Almost every one of their backups return on offense. Whoever gets to be quarterback gets the advantage of playing behind maybe the best offensive line in all of uh, FCS football and with one of the finest receiving core in all of FCS football with the best running back in all of FCS football. So whoever can play quarterback, really they really have got some pressure on them to perform along with the compatriots they have the major thing is that on defense can we find somebody to go with Tyler Cooter in the front can we replace Mitch Beckstead and Austin Graves at linebacker can we play consistently and better at corner and, and continue our improvement at safety so a lot of great drama yet to go but a, a lot of greatness still on this team you get to go out recruiting now after you enjoy Thanksgiving with the family. <laughs> yeah, you're going to go recruit. What, what do you want to see come into this program, though, as you go out and find some new players? We need another cadre of, of offensive guys that can help us be explosive. Uh, we need a young quarterback to add to the pile. We need an, another young running back to add to the pile. Offensive line-wise, though, we really have only one spot 
available because we returned two outstanding players from missions and hopefully those guys will come back from their mission healthy enough to be able to get back on the field and with the size that they went out with wow i think they can be outstanding defensively though we do not have a pass rush and we have got to find a pass rush through recruiting through player development and through scheme finally it's thanksgiving and and a chance now to to think back upon the things we're thankful for one of the things i was is the chill that I got when I actually heard a college football environment here in Holt Arena. You've got to feel that same type of way towards these fans, especially late in the season when they came out and supported your team. Well, no question, Matt. There's a lot of us that are four-year veterans of the agony of what we went through, you included. And uh, the fans that were here through those four years hopefully have been rewarded with a Thanksgiving that they can look back on 214 and say, wow, that was a cool deal. And I can anticipate being just as cool in 215. But a great job by our coaching staff, a great job by our trainers, our medical staff, our equipment guys, and everybody associated with what we do. Primarily, though, from President Velas and his staff, they saw the vision that we were talking about when Jeff Tingey said, Mike, I want you to be our head football coach. And we have fulfilled everybody's expectations. And now our expectations continue to rise as we chase a big sky, an undefeated big sky conference championship. As we bid adieu to 214, favorite moment that you saw from your football team this season? Oh, when we took the senior picture after the game. Uh, I was in the press box doing radio with Jerry Miller, and I looked down on the field, and there were all those 21 seniors, many of whom have never started many of whom never were people that we talked about in many of the interviews you and I have done, who put in four, maybe five long years in this program to be able to stand on the eye with their parents on senior day and say, look what we have accomplished. I, I just think that was the most poignant moment and maybe the most poignant moment I've had in all of coaching because what a rise by a great senior class. It has been fun watching this team and we will be back on this turf to talk about a lot more good moments coming up next year. Our thanks to Mike Kramer. I'm Matt Gittins. You've been watching the weekly Bengal Update.